Hey everyone, and welcome back to another VR News Recap, going over not only the major stories over the past few days, but also giving a platform to those lesser seen. Today we go down the full dive VR rabbit hole, spooktober goodness with new horror games, Population 1, fun VR tech, and of course more. Don't forget, there is an Oculus Quest 2 giveaway going on right now. Check out the video description or pinned comment for easy entry. Winner announced in the first video after 1013. Also, if this content was useful to you or you enjoyed it at all, hitting that subscribe button is the best way to see more. I hope you enjoy the video, y'all. There is a lot of cool tech out there. Sometimes it works very well, and sometimes it unfortunately doesn't. And while the tech coming up is pretty much applicable to zero of y'all, that's how I retain your interest, picking topics no one's going to be able to use. But it's still fun to give a little light to these stories and where I look forward to tech like this coming to my day-to-day -day profession. This is the Canon Mreal S1 Mixed Reality Viewer. I'm going to probably call it for the purpose of this video. This is not Canon's first attempt here, but this is the newest model based on customer feedback for this enterprise device. Enterprise, because you're going to be having to sell adult substances or yourself possibly to afford this. It's not for normies like you and I. There's not much on this yet, though, because I can't read a lot on the website and their listing page is actually outdated with the old info. Just new pictures, but in a nutshell, it's one of the smallest VR and AR devices out there with a modular build so you can use it how you want. But Eric, I'm, I'm never gonna use that. You are probably correct. However, this headset was specifically made for a couple purposes, one of those being the automotive industry, the one that I work in in my day-to-day -day life, and it's gonna be interesting on how that applies to it because it could apply to it if you ever want to go to that profession. Whether it's mostly for design purposes, I envision the possibilities of training my techs with mixed reality. Instead of a lengthy or costly training program, to have a pass-through screen helping with directions, instructions, and repair procedures means I don't have to work or train as hard and still get to play with some cool toys. But since we just talked about something pretty much 0% of us will ever see or use, let's talk about something a little more applicable to you. Like steampunk. That's not a super niche genre, is it? But it's given us some amazing fashion, giant spiders in the Wild West, and some great memes. But there's a Kickstarter that I'd like to highlight for a game called Patagon the Forbidden Island, an open world VR steampunk RPG. Hunt dinosaurs, take on quest, or explore the mysteries of a seven square mile open world island with support for literally every single headset out there, including the Quest and Quest 2, but if you don't have VR, you can play on your desktop as well. The gameplay involves stealth, action, puzzles, and trying to outwit an extremely dangerous environment, but don't worry, you've got the steampunk weapons by your side like the steam rifle, Tesla gun, bombs, traps, explosives, and more. You'll have an engaging story where you get to make the choices that affect the outcome of Patagon Island. Check out the Kickstarter in the video description. It looks like this game is well into development already, and there's a ton of info I can't share here because of course that would just take way too much of your time and my time editing. But as far as visuals go, this looks pretty good, and I think many of us are looking for longer form content in VR, something to sink some time into. Maybe this is it. Check it out. I think there's a lot of games on Kickstarter that don't get enough attention, so we definitely want to highlight them here. And for those who want to win a little cash or a nice VR accessory, Synth Riders may be something to put on your radar because currently they are doing weekly challenges where you need to beat one of your favorite VR creators in the song of their choice and week one's mind, baby. These challenges will launch on each Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so this has already started. And my challenge to you is Electric Swing Circus Empires on hard with a couple fun modifiers. Top three scores for this week will earn $75, $50, and $25 respectfully. And those top three, as long as shipping is available, will win one of these guys. This is basically a VR headset stain. You probably have seen them in my intro. I like them. They're pretty cool. So I'm going to give these and ship these out to the top three winners as well. Good luck. Synth Riders should be on your radar. If you like rhythm games, it's a blast. Well, we can finally talk about Population 1, a game I've been playing for a little bit, but I couldn't talk about it because of a rock-solid NDA, but Population 1 is officially coming to every headset on October 22nd for $29.99. Before I share my thoughts on the game as a quick TLDR, Population 1 is a VR battle royale set in an open world where players can climb anything, fly anywhere, and fight everywhere. Population 1 combines all of the staples of a traditional battle royale genre and live service to create a multiplayer community. Guys, it's basically Fortnite in VR, done well, and it's an absolute blast. 
Crossplay will bring together an even wider multiplayer community, including many new VR enthusiasts. Now, Population 1 supports 18 players, which is 6 squads, 3 players each per match, and eliminated players do have a great spectator mode to keep up with the action. Playing between PC VR and the Oculus Quest 1, there were some differences, but the degree in which Big Box got this running on the Quest 1 was nearly flawless, and I'm expecting it to be even better on the Oculus Quest 2, and I'll be sharing footage soon I need to re-record after my SD card broke. A couple thoughts on Population 1, I know there's a lot of different reviews out there, I have two thoughts on the game. The first one is this game, it's not revolutionary, it does not update the Battle Royale genre at all, it doesn't add too many VR mechanics to it, it's basically playing Fortnite in VR to a degree, and while that can be good or bad depending on how you view the genre, I, you might hate it because of that, I find that to be a huge net positive because this is one of the most easily digestible, easily enterable games out there. It's going to be very accessible to a ton of different people, and I'm expecting this to just have a constant player base, which is great because if you're like me, who plays mostly multiplayer games, it's been hard lately in some games. Pavlov and Onward, it's not as easy as it used to be because people are playing so many different games, so that's a huge positive for Population 1. Also, specifically talking about the Quest version, and Quest 1 is what I played mostly on, and the degree that Big Box got it running on the Oculus Quest 1 I think is a huge achievement that it runs so flawlessly on a mobile processor. The Oculus Quest 2 should be even better, but I think a lot of people who have Oculus Quest headsets are going to find this to be one of the best games on the headset in the sense of it feels like a full-fledged title that just works well. I know there's varying opinions on that, but I have to recommend Population 1, it is an absolute blast, it is the bare bones battle royale experience, so don't expect this to revolutionize the wheel, but for what it does, it does it well, and I've never not had fun playing. Now I've also been watching my fair share of anime, fair share being an understatement of my bin sessions, and every SAO and isekai show reminds me of that super dystopian far off future of full dive VR, or the closest thing to it. Now Haptex does some pretty cool stuff, they're most well known for their Haptex gloves, which scream rule 34 to me. They have cool tactile tele robots as well, giving Bezos already more control over us than he already has, but a new grant of $1.5 million aims to help build full body haptics for VR and telepresence robots. This project will be called Forcebot, and while details are very slim at the moment, it's quoted to let users feel large scale, passive and active constraints on their movements that closely mimic real world forces. This allows the user to feel the shape, weight and texture of virtual objects, move naturally in VR, and use robots for physical object manipulation. This project will most likely involve the haptics gloves as well as some type of motion platform for artificial walking. Is it full dive VR? Of course not. Is full dive VR actually going to be a thing like SAO? Who knows what things are going to be like in 100 years. But it's exciting to see new ways to experience life in virtual reality, and if you saw something like this at an amusement park, would you jump in? I know I would. But what if you wanted to crap your pants and pet the dog? Well, just in time for Halloween, another amazing horror VR game looks to be launching on the Oculus Quest. This one is an adaptation and improvement over the 2019 survival horror game that is set in the same 1990 film world as the Blair Witch Project. The original Blair Witch game was a blast, but was for sure confusing at times. The original had a lot of stealth and adventure, but it also had you maneuvering a very dense forest with little to no direction, which is true to the cult movie classic and in VR, this is the type of horror immersion that while fun traditionally, is even better in VR. We have to focus on the dog here, Bullet, because in the original game, he is a major set piece, he searches and retrieves important items, responds to pets and touch, he can follow scent trails, even responds to reprimands. Did I mention head pets? There's not much that can be said to do this game justice, I can't really sell it well because there's actually not that much to do in game. But it's an experiment in forced helplessness that, as a game, only provides the bare essentials, while that atmosphere and ever-growing fear of being lost in the woods leads to a lot of great moments. It's 100% worth the playthrough on traditional means, and a must for VR if they pull it off. Happy Spooktober, everybody. But that is going to be the end of today's video. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to never miss an upload, and I'll see you next time, Space Cowboys.